In a time with Prusa Minis, King Grown KP3Ss, and their V2 Pros, now comes the Crux 1 Mini by Tronxy. This is their entry into small size printer, featuring a small body with integrated functions such as 180 by 180 by 180 print size, OSG speed linear roller guides, 8 language control screen, resume print function, filament detection, lattice glass, turbo cooling, direct drive, all of this stuff we're going to check out next. Hey everyone, welcome to the corner. It's me, Jeff. Glad to have you here. This time around, I got myself a brand new Trunksy Crux. So first off, I want to say thank you to everybody watching the video right now. It's viewers like you that make my channel possible. A little bit of housekeeping though, Trunksy did send me the Crux one free of charge. No money was exchanged or paid for this review whatsoever. Trunksy did send me a list of points they wanted me to feature in this video. And I think I covered most of them in the intro. I'm going to unpack it here so it's pretty straightforward, really quick and easy. It probably took me about maybe 20 minutes of real time. The instructions were pretty good overall. As with most products that are made overseas, there is going to be a translation issue with some of the things. But overall, it did get its point across and it was well documented with lots of pictures. So if you couldn't understand some of the translations, you could look at the pictures. You'll actually see me looking at the laptop too because they have a digital copy on the SD card as well. One thing I was really impressed with with this build was the fact that the machine is quite solid. It's not a plastic printer at all, it's metal. And it has a little bit of weight to it. It's not overly heavy for its size, but you'll know it's solid. It feels like a machine, not a toy. Even the extruder itself is a metal body extruder. The extruder, though, is just a single gear, so be warned for that. But it has an enforced spring on it. Some of those colored springs that you see in the uh, upgrade kits for uh, printers which are the bed springs. That's actually what they're using for the extruder on this. It's also got a 3D printed fan duct for cooling. As well as it has an MK8 style extruder in it. Oh, lovely. So that's it. The printer's assembled. And here is the assembled Trunksy Crux 1. Under the hood, we see an integrated 10 amp power supply. This board features TMC2225 drivers, an STM32F4 chipset. My only one complaint is the fact that the wires are tinned, as you see here, and they're not ferruled. I do like the big fan on the motherboard. The motherboard is their CXY446 V10. One thing I noticed right off the bat is that all the communication ports are right here up front with a micro SD and USB and your standard communication port. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've been waiting for, the peel. Turning it on and looking at the 2.8 inch touchscreen, you're greeted with a familiar splash screen and tone. The touchscreen is very responsive, but the only complaint I have is at the bottom corner, I'm either not hitting it right or it's just a little bit off. I'm sure they'll fix it in a future update, but overall, it has Marlin on it. It even tells you the processor, so that would be good for when people want to add a custom firmware to this. The Trunksy Crux also features a robust selection of languages to choose from, eight in all. I'll go to English. Moving back out, here you've got your tools, You've got your print head tools, and you've got your movements right here. So as you back out, you see that there's that button again. You go to the preheats, your hot end, and you have one, and you have bed leveling, which is manual at this point in time and gives you the five points. As far as that sticky corner goes, I guess I'll have to look underneath the screen because sometimes when they manufacture these, they leave a little bit of that plastic film on there that could cause a little bit of a problem with the touching. Now on to leveling. The leveling on the trunks is pretty straightforward and easy because of the glass plate and the small bill size. It's actually quite flat, which is awesome. It also has decent sized leveling wheels, which makes it quite nice to adjust as well. Where are those commands? There we go. Filament extrusion. Oh, there we go. And it's a blob of pink or red or whatever they used to test it before. Perfect. I'll give the machine a quick test to see if the thermal runaway is working by simply disconnecting one of the heater block wires from the main board. After about 30 seconds or so of preheating, you should get an error message saying that the runaway printer is halted. As we see that's happening, you're good. 
So I want to take a second to point out the OSG roller blocks on the Crux One. The roller blocks provide stable, flexible, and accurate linear motion. Now these roller blocks are really good for longer ranges. It will be interesting to see what the benefit they will have on a smaller printer. On to a few more features. We're going to test the filament runout sensor and see how Trunksy handles filament runout. So I'm simply going to snip the filament before it reaches the sensor and wait a few moments until the printer recognizes there is no filament. It's going to stop, come up to the corner, allow me to refeed some filament into it, and then I'm going to feed the extruder and hit print in order for it to continue. The only thing I wouldn't mind seeing is if it had to purge some of the filament first, but that's a simple fix in the firmware. Our next test is going to be power loss recovery. Simply just going to pull out the power, plug it back in, and watch the machine reboot. Again, I wouldn't mind seeing another purge before printing in this process as well. Finally, we move on to filament calibration. So I downloaded a 3D printer test in order to check the overhangs, bridging, stringing, and so forth. I ran a couple of retraction tests and temp towers, and this is my end result. So I think it's pretty good here. There's some light stringing, but everything else seems to be fine. So I'm definitely getting a little ambitious here. But I said, what the heck, let's try some flexible filament. So I had some flex that was sitting on my shelf for uh, about a year, I figure. I'd run it through and see what would happen. Yes, I know, I can see there's a whole bunch of stringing, but the crux is printing the flex no problem. Here's that octopus final result. As you can see, there is still stringing, but it's flexible and it does look pretty good actually. I did try to dry that filament, and I tried again with a quick little benchy. Here you can see it's not too bad. Let's get that camera in focus. There we go. You can see so there is a little bit of stringing, but overall it actually looks pretty good. I would almost swear that was PLA. The next thing I'm going to try is I'm going to try to print PETG. But what I do is I brush a coating on the back side of the glass because the coating on the front, I'm not sure how that's going to handle the stickiness and I hate to ruin it. This is just a simple combination of PVA glue and water and I just brush on. Now I'm going to print it at 70 degrees Celsius, but the bed can go as high as 110, which is a really nice feature. As the bed heats up, you won't even see the coating on it as it will dry clear and it will just be a little tacky when it heats up. I'm going to use Amaze Pet G, a nice dark blue color, to do this test, and I'm going to print a chip clip, a dinosaur clip version that I found. Now I'm going to try and get it off the bed. It seems to release not too bad. I chose this because it's a mechanical part. This is the bottom side. As you can see, a little bit of glue's on there, so it kind of has that sheen, but it looks really good. You want to remove this little tab, though, which I'm going to do that right here. It was simple and easy. You can see a little bit of stringing here. Overall, the part didn't turn out too bad. You can tell the mechanical joints are working quite well, so I would think the crux should have no problem handling PETG whatsoever. So I'd like to give a shout out to Yusu Filaments for supplying me with a roll of their beautiful blue silk PLA to run a bunch of tests on the Tronxy Crux printer. Without further ado, let's get to printing. All the prints you see here were done in Prusa Slicer with a length of retraction of 1.6 and a retraction speed of 30. I started off doing the typical benchy with the Silk PLA and you can see it's a pretty good benchy with this use of filament. It's got a nice shine and it looks really good for our first benchy. I think that's a good quality one. I followed this up with a vase but I unfortunately didn't get a video recording of it. But again with the vase the lines are smooth, it's nice and shiny. It's a good test. There is one little line on there, and I'll have to look at the rollers and the mechanical parts of the machine. I might have gotten a little bit of filament dust. My third and final test print here is what would it look really good in this blue color? Well, I decided on Dr. Manhattan from the Watchmen. It's a fantastic print. It's got a good sheen in it. Look at the muscle tone for the man. This is just awesome. It really does a good job right out of the box with these prints. I was very much impressed with the quality I do want to let you know that this is just a simple unboxing and first impressions video. It's not an actual review as of yet because this could be a pre-production model they sent me. 
The pre-order price for the Crux is currently at 179 US dollars till July 1st, 2022. 179 for this printer, I believe, is a very good deal. Hopefully, after the pre-order sales are all done, the marketing department will look at a good demographic price to put this into. This little printer does have a lot going for it. I generally print PLA mostly, but sometimes with PETG and sometimes TPU. This little guy seems to handle all of those three filaments with no problem at all. All the features that are advertised with this printer seem to work. There are a few minor things, but I'm sure it can be sorted out with firmware as time goes on and they release some new ones. Hopefully, Tronxy will listen to some of the feedback and be able to provide some fixes for them. Overall, I did enjoy the printing experience with this small printer. It was easy to assemble and the prints came out looking quite good with a minimum tweaking. If you enjoyed this unboxing video, give me a thumbs up, click on the like button. If you're cruising through the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe button. And until next time, keep on printing.